Hey guys, Andy here, and today we have our horror talk episode for this week. It is Halloween Ends. It's the most recent and final installment in the series. For now, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody will pick it up and do another remake, but for now, this is the end of it, so they say. Um, but before we get into it, if you like today's makeup, this is the Ace Butte Tropical Vibes palette in the ColourPop Super Shock shade Jinriki. Yes, Jinriki on my inner corner. Um, everything that I'm wearing will be listed down below in my description box. And normally I do, I go live on TikTok to do my makeup, but I'm going to a late Thanksgiving, early Christmas party. So I just did this look for myself, so. But I do go live Monday through Friday, 2 p.m.-ish central time. So all of my socials, everything that I'm wearing will be listed down below. So if you like makeup, unboxings, and horror with a little bit of horror sprinkled in, please consider subscribing. I'm doing Vlogmas, and I would love to have you along for a ride. So let's just go ahead and get on into it. Alright, Halloween Ends came out this year, 2022, and has an IMDb rating of only 5.1 out of 10, which we'll get there. The storyline goes, four years after the events of Halloween Kills, Lori is living with her granddaughter Allison and is finishing writing her memoir. Michael Myers hasn't been seen since. Lori, after allowing the specter of Michael to determine and drive her reality for decades, has decided to liberate herself from fear and rage and embrace life. But when a young man, Corey Cunningham, is accused of killing a boy he was babysitting, it ignites a cascade of violence and terror that will force Lori to finally confront the evil she can't control once and for all. We've got our trivia here. Nick Castle has a non-Michael Myers cameo for the first time in this trilogy as a party goer who flashes his costume at Corey and says, see anything you like. This is a nod to the iconic line said by Linda in the original Halloween 1978. Halloween Ends uses blue font used in Halloween 3 Season of the Witch for its opening credits. So this is a direct, like, recreation of like Halloween 3 season of the witch so like that's why the fonts the same like the storyline was really taken from that which is one of the reasons I think it has such a low rating. Corey Cunningham is inspired by Army Cunningham from Christine which came out in 1983 when introduced, when we're introduced to Corey in Halloween Ends, he is shown to bear a similar haircut and identical blue button-up shirt and black glasses that Arnie has in Christine, which Christine is another John Carpenter movie, which obviously John Carpenter made the original Halloween. I have never seen Christine. I feel like I should now put it on my to-watch list, but I think that that's really neat. Corey is frightened by The Thing. 1982, which is another movie by John Carpenter. So a double layer shout out as the characters in the original Halloween were also watching the thing from another world. Like the layers and layers. It's just hilarious. And I feel like John Carpenter did that in the original movie because like, obviously if he made that, he would have the rights to it. So he could put it on the TV and have them watching it. And it, you know, when Frank and, lawyer and Lori are in the grocery store, the song playing is a tonal version of Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult. An Easter egg is the song is frequently used in the Halloween series. And I just thought that that was really neat because I didn't pick up on that watching it the first time through. I probably did because, like, I love that song. And I was probably jamming out to it like, oh, this sounds familiar. But, like, just reading the trivia, I was just like, Okay. And I just don't necessarily asso that, associate that song with the movie, but like, nah, you know, it, it makes sense. But I feel like one of the reasons this movie got such low ratings was just because you're going to introduce Corey and then Michael had such a low part of the movie 
And this, they, they like built it up as it was going to be this big battle between Michael and Lori. And it was just really low played because they had, they basically made this like a remake of season three of The Witch instead of it being this like final movie of the trilogy. Again, this is my little spoiler alert. You know, if you don't like gore or talking about any further spoilers we're gonna get into the kill count and the the deaths of the movie there are 18 in this movie so quite a bit lower than the last one but still up there like there was and in my opinion like that's this movie had a really slow beginning but like once it started ticking off the deaths they were gruesome in this movie like in my opinion like But anywho, we are going to get into the deaths, so if that is not your thing, please kindly click off now. I will, you know, that's my little warning there. But otherwise, let's go ahead and get on into the kill count. We have Jeremy Allen was accidentally knocked off an indoor balcony by Corey breaking his neck. We have unnamed man shot in the head by an unknown person off screen. Unnamed man either hung by an unknown man or hung himself committing suicide off screen. We have an unnamed vagabond stabbed to death by Corey. Self-defense. Officer Doug Mullaney stabbed to death by Michael with a kitchen knife after he slit his throat while Corey was still holding him. Dr. Mathis stabbed to death by Corey with a corkscrew. Nurse Deb stabbed in the chest by Michael with a kitchen knife. Billy stabbed in the eye by Cor Corey with a drumstick off screen. Stacy killed by Corey with a wrench. Ronald Cunningham accidentally shot in the head by Terry. We have Terry, who face was melted by Corey with a blowtorch. Margot head stomped on by Corey after he trapped her under a chain link fence. Joan Cunningham stabbed by Corey with a kitchen knife off screen. Unnamed radio receptionist stabbed to death by Corey with a kitchen knife. Willie, the kid, jaw broken by Corey, who then cut his tongue off with a pair of scissors. Ugh. Corey Cunningham, neck snapped by Michael. That was so anticlimactic for me. Michael Myers, throat slit by Lori with a kitchen knife, who then cut his wrists. His body was later ground up at the junkyard. And like, I like that. I liked that ending of the town finally like taking him and because like it was a whole town affair but I don't know I just I didn't love the movie I didn't hate it but it felt a little all over the place it felt like they were trying to do two different things like they were trying to pay so much homage to the season of the witch the Halloween three but they were also really trying to just end the trilogy and like I feel like you just couldn't have done both I feel like they should have just, they should have made their, made it their own. Because that's what they did with Halloween Kills, was they really took that and ran with it. So I don't know why they chose to do this the way that they did. And I think that's one of the reasons why it got such low rating that it did. I do think that, like, obviously the budget was great. Um, the acting was pretty good, in my opinion. The kills were phenomenal. I have been debating since I started the series on what I was going to give this movie because I don't love it. But I under like now that I understand what they were going for, like I get it. <sighs> I keep going back and forth between giving it a two star or a three star. And like I'm not gonna rip my stars in half. I'm not gonna decimate my stars like that to give it a two and a half star to just be like in the middle. Because part of me wants to give it two stars because I didn't like it. And this is my personal rating. But like, it had so much potential and it was good. Like, I would watch it again. But this has been my least favorite Halloween movie that I have watched. And I feel like for that reason, it deserves two stars. To reflect that out of all of them. So I think 
think that that's what I'm going to do. I think that this guy is going to get two stars because it needs to reflect the, maybe if I can get it off my nail, it needs to reflect that like, I am sad. I am saddened by the fact that like, it's the worst of the series in my humble opinion. So we are going to give this guy two stars. As you can see here, two stars. Two out of five. That ends. So this is the end of everything that is canon. So I covered the original Halloween and then the three remakes. This is the 2018 timeline. I am going to be covering the Rob Zombie timeline, which is the 2007 and 2009 movies. They're not canon, but as I've said, I really love Rob Zombie and I love those movies. So I do want to cover those. But this is the end of everything that is canon. This is the end of the Halloween movies that are up to date. I think what I'm going to try to do is... I'm just looking. Next week. So in the next... We'll get an episode out next week and the week after because I'm going to have a special Christmas horror talk for you guys. So if you want to leave in the comments what you think that movie is going to be, I would love to hear your requests and hear your, your thoughts on what you think that, that might be. But let me know, what did you think of this movie? Did you see it? Like, I'm very happy that I watched it on Peacock. Like, I would have been really mad had I paid money to go see this in theaters because it wasn't good enough for that. But watching it on Peacock on the TV, meh, it was fine. It was eh. But I'm going to go head out now to my Halloween, par Halloween party. Because I'm reading Halloween. To my Thanksgiving Christmas party. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.